Alright, I'm back. I um, actually watched a video and I, I wanted to do a video um, as my own version and answer um, the questions on what I, my experience with fibromyalgia um, and what I've been told. Um, what is fibromyalgia and and the cause of fibromyalgia and when I was diagnosed and things of that nature and pardon me and as I've mentioned and I've shared several journals um, over the years with everyone I have struggled with fight with my fight with fibromyalgia and getting people to understand my my battle with it and educate people on what it is and what it feels like and the medications I've taken and medications I've taken off of the side effects you name it um I've also mentioned that I don't only have fibromyalgia, I also suffer from multiple sclerosis. I also have now have diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid disease. And there's a list of things that um, uh, ailments that I have. So with that being said, um, that comes along with having fibromyalgia, and I watched. A, a video just shortly less than five minutes ago where this person on the video um, to my understanding this person only has um, fibromyalgia myself and a lot of other people that I've come to know and become acquainted with also suffer from um, fatigue sitting like I'm sitting now in the upright position is painful you get very tired very restful have um, restful leg um, syndrome anyhow causes could be from injury could be from um, abuse to the body could be from uh, something that that um, what is the word? I, brain fog you get with fibromyalgia. And this person said you don't get brain fog. But you will get brain fog with fibromyalgia. But it's something that, that's a tragedy. is something that happened that in your life that, that was a tragic, so, you know, could cause fibromyalgia. Most people I know was in a, it, it was a tragedy. Something tragic happened in their life and that's, how they begin to have the fibromyalgia. Um, how I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed with a rheumatologist and they test you, your trigger points, and there are 18 trigger points. All 18 of my trigger points was positive. Um, the symptoms that I noticed was hurt when I take a shower, hurt to touch, hurt to hug, um, pain in my lower back and in my neck, um, behind my neck in the shoulders here in the tendons pain in my hips when I wake up in the morning um, pain in the cold weather uh, ringing in the ears um, pain radiating down my arms and down my legs to the bottom of my feet tingling sensation a lot of nerve pain and nerve damage um, uh, I can't forgetfulness, memory loss, sensation to touch, um, mood swing, uh, not able to stand for a long period of time and sit for a period of time, touching in my legs would hurt and, and the shivers. Um, so like I said, all 18 of my trigger points were positive. My son was also diagnosed 
with fibromyalgia, 12 of his trigger points were positive. Um, my father is possible. He never t tested, but he has chronic pain from having um, diabetes. I have another son that um, suffers from autism that um, was tested for fibromyalgia, but he has low potassium, and some of his trigger points were positive, but he is yet to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. It's just chronic illness for him. He suffers from chronic illness. Um, is there a difference between fibro and chronic fatigue? Honestly, in my opinion, there's pain with fibro. There's forgetfulness with fibro. There are trigger points that is pain that in your trigger points. With chronic fatigue, there's tiredness. You're tired um, all the time. Like if you have with the D deficiencies and the B deficiencies and um, dietary issues and irritable bowel issues and so it's, it's totally different. It's a lot more comes with chronic fatigue syndrome than there is with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is nerve and trigger pain more or less with the chronic fatigue. The chronic fatigue is a lot more that comes along with that, like I said, is fatigue, the um, the irritable bowel syndromes, the high blood pressure, the sugar, the depression, um, those those type of things. Um, the fibromyalgia of pain is like someone is taking that sharp knife and like stabbing me, stabbing me in my neck. And when I get up to walk, it's a sharp pain, and then radiating pain going across my hips, and then tingling pain shooting down my arms and legs. So that's what my fibromyalgia pain is. Um, so it's sharp, tingling, sensational pains in this all of the time, especially in the cold weather this time of year, and it can happen in the heat. When you're in the, if you've been out in the heat for too long, it also the heat can also trigger the pain as, as well, over exerting itself. How fibromyalgia is treated is um, water therapy, muscle relaxants, pain medication. Pain medication neurologists and and rheumatologists do not recommend, but they say Lyrica. I was on it temporarily so I can't say that it works or not. Um, I know that pool therapy and, and massage work for me but it's temporary relief. I've had acupuncture done and I had a reaction called flare-ups for myself. Not over exerting yourself. Yoga stretching helps but again that's temporary relief. And so the best thing that's worked for me is resting and not overexerting myself in meditation. That's the best thing that's worked for me. Um, fibromyalgia has affected my mental health tremendously. As I mentioned in the other video, you, I've had suicidal thoughts a lot, completely depressed. Um, I tune myself out. Don't I mean I'm married. I don't like to be bothered. I don't like noise. I don't like people in my space. I like peace and quiet. Uh, I don't like um, to go out, and especially this time of year in the cold. Um, I just like to be to myself. I don't like to be bothered. I don't like noise. I'm sensitive. Having noise sensitivity. Um, I just um, my moods. My mood swings. You never know what mood I want to be. I'm, I'm going to be in. I just don't want to be screwed with. You know, I just just leave me alone, basically. You know, that's that's basically all I can tell you. And it's very difficult to be in a relationship with someone with fibromyalgia because one, you never know what mood we're in, and two, we have insecurities. 
because we don't want to pull you into our moods and make you um, miserable because we're miserable. So that's pretty much it as far as the relationship and the mental health. And it, it affects our mental health tremendously. I think it, it affects our mental health overall. Um, what I would like for the world to understand about fibromyalgia is it's an invisible disease. You can't see it. You can only feel it. And it can fool anyone that do, who doesn't understand it. And I could be driving in my car, for example, I have a handicap plate. I'm driving in my car and I pull up in a grocery store and I'm young. I park in the handicapped parking spot and I go to get out of the car. People are looking at me like there's nothing wrong with her. Why does she have handicapped parking spot or handicapped um, license, license plate? Because it's an invisible disease. They don't know that I'm getting out of that car. I can't walk the long distance. I'm getting out of the car because my back hurt, my knees hurt. Bottom of my feet tingles. You know, I can't go in a grocery store and grocery shop for an hour. I have to grab things really quick and and put in a basket and and get get out of there. I can't do a a, a big grocery shopping. I I can't. I just pick up a few things, put it in the basket, and go. And that takes a lot out of me. I'm extremely extremely tired, and that's where my chronic fatigue syndrome comes into play. So that's what I need to need for you guys to understand about fibromyalgia. It's an invisible disease. You can look at me and think that there's nothing wrong with me. Tomorrow I can have my hair straight, looking beautiful with makeup on, nails done, dress properly, and you wouldn't think that it was anything wrong with me. Well, you need to be able to turn on. The timer is, is not ready. Hmm? I said it for an hour and it's not ready. You're not right? No. Oh, you're not know ready. Then you put the fork in the meat, it'll be tender. I just went and checked it. You can check it again. I'm sorry. The advice I would offer to someone that was diagnosed with fibromyalgia is to seek counseling, to join support groups, and to watch these videos of people who are providing journals and tips and opening up their lives to you. And you can understand how we feel and where we come from. It's constant pain, constant pain. And gentle hugs is us giving you hugs because we want to support you. That's what I can offer you and I pray for you because it's a very painful invisible disease. Thanks again for watching and I hope that I've answered some of your questions. I hope that I've educated you a little bit more with this video. Thanks again. Sassy Beauty. God bless and thanks for watching.